Check it out, man. Okay, Google. Stop. Man, what's good with y'all, man? I'm back again. Okay, um, it's the XCLNC podcast. Um, it's been a long time coming. Hold on, man. Oh, man. So it's been a long time coming, man. Um, right now, um, like I said, like I done told y'all before, we oh, at the, the center, center of pop culture. I <laughs> like to believe in, 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 in there's so much potential in this platform. Um, I'm starting to take it more and more serious every day, and I feel like the weight that this platform is holding, and the weight that we, you know the the purpose that we serving with this thing you know it's really becoming like you know i really be i really be trying to be careful you know what i'm saying more than anything i really be trying to be like you know super super like um focused on you know making sure that it's genuine every time um i had attempted to do this pod like a few other times in the past couple of months as y'all notice i've been gone but like yo um this is hard <laughs> this shit hard, hard. You know, like it's not about being in front of the camera it's not about talking y'all know that for me it's more or less about like just making it feel genuine and making it feel like you know like a real moment and um like i said man like this is th- it's harder than it looks and i appreciate y'all still being here with me i appreciate y'all you know Shout out to YouTube Shorts again. We're gonna start this off, man. Thank you to YouTube Shorts for sponsoring this channel and for sponsoring the movement. And, you know, this gold boy movement that we doing right now and this Pablo Nagaso shit that we doing. You know, thank y'all for everything that y'all do for me. And thank y'all, thank you to you. You know what I'm saying? You. For tuning in and checking this out. You know, um, we don't have no major sponsorships or nothing like that. Um, like I told y'all about the light collective and everything like that. Like we don't really do, you know, any mainstream um, endorsements, but right now I want to thank YouTube Shorts. Let's get that out the way. But man, dude, so much to talk about, but not a lot to say. And that's what I've been trying to like, you know, pod about like, man, everything that's been going on, you know, I might even miss some of this stuff because it's been such a long amount of time, but man, it's it's so much going on. It's a lot to talk about, but it's not much to say. Um, OJ Simpson passed. This is what made me really sit down. I'm like, yo, I, I gotta say something. Um, OJ Simpson passed of cancer um, a couple of days, I guess the day before yesterday. So um, I really, I originally meant to to pie on April Fool's Day, on April 1st or like at the end of March, but um, it's April 15th now. Um, and like I told y'all, man, I just couldn't get in that genuine pie space. It just felt like, you know, I felt like I was forcing it. So I was like, you know, ah. And um, and it was a lot. It was a lot of stuff going on. Um, but I'm gonna just hop right into it with some quick notes, man. Y'all know how much I love y'all, man. Let me just speak some real, real quick stuff to y'all, real quick. First things first. Uh, I make my own grits. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Al Green. You know what I'm saying? Be real about the necessity of people in your life, like the people in your life and the level of necessity that, that there is. That's, I'm not I'm not gonna say too much on that, you know what I'm saying? I don't like being a, the he-man, woman, hater pod, you know what I'm saying? I hate to start it off like that, but I just wrote that down real quick. I thought it was funny, you know? Um, you know, I make my own grits, you know what I'm saying? Uh, no disrespect to Al Green, you know I'm a rapper, so it's whatever. But um, yeah, man, just, just think about that real quick note, you know? I was gonna talk about, um, this is one of the things I was gonna say too, you know? Um, we live in, we we are, you know, a lot of people say like Gen Z, a lot of people say like, you know, the um, Y2K kids or whatever. Like we're the generation of, of teen mom. You know what I'm saying? We're the teen mom generation. We grew up watching it. And I feel like we really, we are really seeing the, um, the effects of that, you know, um, major programming, you know what I'm saying? Not bashing those people or not bashing those young women for sharing their story with these girls because that's something that might have need to be sent. I mean, that might have need to be, uh, that would, that should, that might have need to be solved by, um, you know, young women, you know, to kind of understand where it was at. But I think they just kind of made it so, like, you know, so regular and so, you know, um, almost like, you know, it's, it's kind of normal to just have, like, be young and have a kid, you know what I'm saying? Especially at that age, usually they was like 16, 17. Like, I can remember that show coming out. Um, 
but yeah man you know we the team mom generation and i would really hope that you know we will learn from it more than just like be accustomed to it and yeah man that's a quick note um but i feel like uh even as even as we grow up you know we 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 influence the generation next to us or like sometimes I, I don't like the word generation i feel like you know with times now it's like those things change within years and years you know four years is really almost kind of like a a different change of period of people you know i feel like four years could really make a huge difference between me and you you know so yeah definitely definitely like I, it's just just all of that you know like flavor of love like the like the different programming and stuff that we i'm gonna talk about this um flavor of love and like you know um i love new york um love and hip-hop uh housewives of wherever the fuck um you know this is like programming that we you know i'm not gonna say it's like just completely negative because it's all about how you consume things but you know um I think it, it it definitely shaped us as a people. You know what I'm saying? Even with like you know, conversational tempo. People don't know how to talk to people anymore, and you know, I would say like a lot of women. You know, some of these women see these how these people talk to each other on these reality TV shows, and they think that that same conversational tempo is going to solve things in their actual life. And that's a little bit different from Team Mom, but you know, I, I just I think I think it's a great you know I think once we talk about it, like I said, it's like you know things get better, and um, it's funny that I said conversational tempo because you can kind of see like even like like in a day to day conversation of like how things may have gotten out of control, or like yo. I can't speak to you correctly so this situation is either going to go out of control or I'm going to throw a drink in your face and I'm going to push you into the pool or whatever it is you know that's not reality you know nine times out of ten it ends in like a domestic case or like you know one of these guys that you know they think is cool and you know I mean I, 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 I can count on my hand how many of the homies really watch reality TV shows and like yo this is like how I kind of like see life but my guy's not watching love and hip hop or my guy's not watching um housewives of whatever you know what i'm saying and when he talking to you he don't he don't think like that you know what i'm saying so i just i just think you know this generation is becoming more and more independent and like less programmed like people kind of want to have their own life you know and kind of have like their own initial thought and i think I think that will fix, you know, the 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 programming that's been put before us. But for sure, man, like I can kind of remember growing up and watching like Guy Code, and watching like Girl Code, and watching. I remember, like I I remember growing up and watching Yo Mama for real. Like that those those were the shows that we watched. You know, we we came home, we rushed home that thirty minute walk from school or whatever, the drive from school. And then you rushed in the crib, you watched Yo Mama, you watched Team Mom, America's Best Dance Crew, um, you know, just different things like that. Like, I can remember American Idol being on air and stuff like that and just really just being, like, engaged with this, like, positive program. And then, like, you know, and then you got stuff like that. You know, I think, I think reality TV definitely took, like, a turn for the worse. And speaking of reality TV, and this is, you know, it's funny that, you know, it's kind of where I brought Team Mom from when I wrote these notes out. Um, I'm so proud of Drewski, bro, and I'm so proud of what they're doing. This, like, this could have been, like, series and, like, it being, like, completely a YouTube thing and it just being, like, something that, like, is gonna make us all laugh and that we all look forward to when we get home from work or like when we get home from school or whatever, you know, however people may be watching it. It's like, yo, I feel like that is so dope. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it kind of gives us that same breath and like tempo of like this reality TV show um, format that we all have like just loved for so long. And it's kind of like a lost art, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's entertaining, it's hilarious. I love Ugly Rapper a lot. 
um <laughs> i fuck with dude um heavy free crit mac <laughs> free crit mac off free that motherfucking mac, yeah. band um nav green man like yo this is re this is what we want reality tv to be and this is what we want like you know this is how we want to be entertained like this shit is like in unbelievably entertaining you know what i'm saying so this this era that we in now to see drewski doing his thing the way he doing it and to see like you know how people consuming it and enjoying it so much and to see these like you know each of these individual people even though they come from totally different walks of life just kind of like turn into their own stars and kind of like you know branch off into crazier things i feel like that's what reality tv is supposed to be you know what i'm saying he's definitely like changing the format and like making it something to kind of like love again and you don't really feel toxic loving it because it's hilarious you know what i'm saying so man shout out drewski you know um shout out um excuse me shout out all the people that make it like you know they, they put the pieces together to make it cool and make it real you know i really love it shout out nav green um and, sh- and shout out could have been records you know even as like the franchise or whatever it is you know shout out them you know and um and it's just giving us something to laugh at in times like this um it's a few other things i want to talk about um the baltimore bridge um one of the one of the bridges in baltimore like actually like collapsed and fell one of the i think it was like a cargo boat or something like that that like crashed into it um uh, shout out to Baltimore, shout out B-more, shout out, you know, all the people that, you know, they're, apparently they were, like, searching for bodies and stuff like that last time I checked on the situation, and, like, when you have, like, situations like that, bro, it's like, you know, it's crazy on the city, it's like, you know, these are what these things are made for, and, like, when, when it fails and, like, creates danger for people, you know, it's tragic, so, um, man, shout out B-more, man, shout out to all the people that, like, you know, um, play a part in the, um, the the reconciliation and the solution and the um the efforts to fix disasters like that you know that's tragic and um i just hope everybody is okay you know um this is april 15 so it happened some while back but you know this is just some things that i kind of like had wrote about i was like yo oh that's crazy um to think of something like that were to happen in chicago is like you know i can't even fathom so you know um shout goes out to them and you know just condolences to whoever was lost um yeah man the baltimore bridge is crazy um so this is something else i want to talk about like on a lighter note um man bro justin fields bro y'all know how i feel about the bears bro um justin fields uh ends up with the steelers um i guess they worked out a deal with them and he ends up leaving he ends up leaving the bears and goes to play with another great franchise with another huge quarterback franchise which is the Steelers you know to kind of run up behind that legacy of Big Ben and you know and all these other great quarterbacks um I think right batch I mean it's so many great there's a bunch of great um Steelers quarterbacks that we can remember and go back but definitely Ben Roethlisberger is one of those guys that you kind of remember and I think that Justin Fields is totally capable of like filling out that you know um kind of filling out that uh those shoes and kind of like stepping into those shoes for sure um it's making me excited for next year and the next season so um shout out chicago man you already know what it is i don't think anybody's upset about it i think we're more just like people in chicago bears fans are just kind of more or less worried about who is who's gonna step into the shoes of justin fields now you know um amazing athletic quarterback um one of the most athletic quarterbacks that we have seen at the quarterback position in Chicago for for a very long time. Um, I don't think we've ever had a quarterback that can move like that. So, and I just don't think we utilized his athletic ability while we had him here. But um, you know, it is what it is. Um, and that dude deserves to be a star. He deserves to be on a team that's gonna make him feel like a star. So. You know, shout out Justin Fields, and we will be watching the Steelers next year. Y'all already know I'm Chiefs Nation, 
y'all already know I'm always going to be, I'm not ashamed to be embarrassed. You know, I'm embarrassed for, I'm always be embarrassed and um, go Chiefs. And man, let's check out the Steelers, man. I'm, I, 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 I'm rooting for the Steelers. You know what I'm saying? I'm a true Madden NFL. I'm a Madden 08 football like like yo i love the steelers just like anybody else you know palomalu you know i'm i grew up in that steelers reign you know what i'm saying um i was playing like pop warner football i was playing like park district football during that like steelers run so you know the steelers have always been like a great franchise huge big team for me so to see him go there is like super exciting and um i'm sure they're gonna make him do you know go crazy so you know, you never know. Like, they might be a playoff team right out the back. So, it's exciting to see, you know. And um, I feel like, you know, after watching Ben Roethlisberger retire with great numbers and a great name after, you know, repairing his scandal and stuff like that and just, you know, still being a stand-up person in society. It's cool to see the Steelers pivot to this athletic quarterback type team. So I'm excited to see what they do next year. Um, shout out Justin Fields. Um, oh, okay, so look, I want to talk about this really quick. This is probably going to be one of my shortest pods, but it is what it is. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Apparently, and this is like, yo, you know me. I'm like super like, yo, fuck the fourth wall type shit. Like I'm, I'm super like, you know, here with this shit. If Tyler, the creator, is fucking Gerard Carmichael, I don't think anybody gives a fuck if they're fucking. Everybody just wants to know who the fuck is getting bent over and getting their cheeks clapped. <laughs> That's the only thing that we care. Like, if them niggas gay, we don't care if they gay. Nigga, who getting cracked? <laughs> That's the true question, bro. <laughs> That's the true question, bro. Like, who is getting cracked? Um, If you watch this, I'm kind of late on it. It's April 15th. If you watching the the Gerard Carmichael show, I like yo. I watched the original Netflix Gerard Carmichael show. Um, I loved every episode of it. I feel like dude truly captured um, the atmosphere of a black sitcom show in the twenties. Um, this is a twenties tell. This is a twenties podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yo, we're we're in the twenties. You know what I'm saying? Um, he truly captured that essence of like, yo, a great in audience, in studio audience sitcom. And at some point in time, I do want him to go back to that. I think people are loving what this is now, but I would love to see him go back to that um, sitcom format. You know, him, Mike Epps, um, Lil Rel, um man and so many other guys that kind of do that like sitcom thing yo like we need that man you know and this and this and it was such a great i mean i love the show i think it's still available i think you can still like stream it or whatever but i would love to see more of that from him and i gotta really catch up on this show like he has a new different show that's like in, the, in a completely different like it's like a completely different um uh nature and like um point of view so um yeah man the gerard carmichael show he has tyler on there and he's like this like really like intimate setting and then they're like he's like basically you know asking him like you gotta watch it it's a one it's, and that's why it's such a good show you gotta watch it i can't explain it to you without you seeing it and that's why that's a part of gerard carmichael's genius and I'm going to say a part of Tyler's genius, too. I'm sure he has some, like, creative hand in this, as, like, aside from just acting. So, yeah, man. Um, this is hilarious, dude. Um, when I first heard about it, I didn't hear, I didn't know that it was the show. People was just like, yeah, Gerard Carmichael and Tyler, the creator, are gay together for each other. <laughs> and, you know, that's how every, like, everything that's anything always comes out of context. So that's how I thought it was. That's what I thought it was in the beginning. And I was like, okay, them niggas gay. The only question I had was like, yo, who the fuck is getting cracked? <laughs> that shit had me crying laughing, bro. I'm like, yo, but nah, man, that's once you watch it, it kind of it makes more sense and it's clearly theatrical and it's and it's really cool. Um shout out Gerard Carmichael and obviously shout out Tyler Creator. Y'all know how much I love Tyler Creator, man. Um but yeah, Gerard Carmichael show, bro. Um 
uh, a part of like really good entertainment and television is going on right now. I'm not gonna say television because it's not, um, but you know, entertainment right now. Um, I also wanted to talk to you guys about if you hadn't catched it, it's kind of late. I'm kind of late on telling y'all about this, but yo, you have to go watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith by um with with Donald Glover. This is a great series. Um, it's on. I think it's. I think it's with Amazon. I think it's with Amazon Prime. I I, I love these Amazon Prime shows, dude. I mean, whatever, the stuff that's on this Amazon Prime stuff, it's like, yo, that's equally fire. Um, all of these Paramount shows, these Amazon shows, yeah, they've been keeping me entertained like while I just haven't been had anything to do. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith is definitely one of the, like, the standout shows for me. Um, I can't remember the, uh, the co-star's name, but she killed it. Um, the energy behind the entire show is like unbelievably sexy. And it's like, yo, this is like, like I, and I'm gonna say this, um, I'm, n- I'm not really like, I'm not usually sexually attracted to Asian women or like, I'm not even sure of nationality. I don't even want to disrespect her, but yo, this made me feel like, yo, let me go talk to Lil Ling Ling, yo. (laughs) I'm like, yo, this, this shit was exciting, bro. And it was shot so well. Um, I've seen, I've seen other things by Donald like shot and like this shot better, but this is like, it was shot so well. The screenplay was great and it was unbelievably dramatic and the sexual tension on this show is amazing. I think everybody should watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Um, if you're into like, you know, obviously if you watch, okay, so the original Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, um, great show. I mean, not great show, great movie, but this show is nothing like that. And I love it. I still love it. I feel like this is, it's the same plot, but it's almost kind of like an epilogue, not an epilogue, but kind of like a prequel to whatever they became. And I love it, man. I love that. I love that show. And I think that, um, I think that, you know, it should definitely win some type of award. I'm sure it's going to win some type of award or something. It's great to see, um, black male lead, Asian female lead action, rom-com action. Like this is a, it's a rom-com action type of vibe and the sexual tension behind it is great. Um, it seems like we only get shows with like sexual tension, like P Valley and like, you know, empower. And it's like, just this, like, really kind of like raunchy kind of like sexually uncomfortable you know i'm not i'm not a homophobe or anything like that but it's you know it's just kind of somewhat distasteful you know what i'm saying some of this like some of these shows you just kind of be like you know and that's not me i mean i'm not a p-valley expert but you know i just think i I think this is like such a good show and uh for it to be like on amazon prime but that's not saying i'm not shooting amazon prime i'm just saying for it to be like that was super dope um i'm just gonna name some other amazon primes um Michael B. Jordan, uh, Tom Clancy, Joan. Um, I'm gonna put the name up there. I can't remember the name of um, that that movie. I love that movie with Michael B. Jordan on Amazon Prime. You gotta go watch that one. And there's like a bunch of Amazon Prime movies that I love. But yeah, man, shout out, shout out, shout out, Charles Gambino. I think he's. Um, it's April 15th. They said he's supposed to drop some music tonight. I haven't seen it. So, shout out, Charles Gambino. Shout out, to, to, uh, Donald Glover. And um, yeah, man, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And also. Um, what what did I begin even saying? Yeah, man, shout out them, man. Super good show, and um, shout out Gerard Carmichael too. Um, um, I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback on one of my older episodes, um, where we talked about immigration. I'm gonna talk about something that I experienced recently, after being apprehended in the public penal system of Chicago. Yo, immigration is starting to see solutions and the public media is not covering it and they are not speaking on it. Um, Brandon Johnson and uh, with the, in the collaboration with many other like companies and large companies are making solutions for the immigration and for the housing crisis that we're dealing with which are two different problems. The housing and residential crisis is a problem. It's not a crisis. The residential issue in Chicago is a problem. And the immigration crisis are two different problems in Chicago. And they are, they are doing things to do it now. They are doing things to fix it. I'm seeing this stuff. Um, I think I told y'all about um, my time um, actually um, stepping into a police station in Chicago and seeing like, you know, um, homeless immigrants. I'm not going to necessarily say immigrants because I can't really necessarily tell, but I'm pretty sure that's what the situation was and seeing like a floor, you know, these people were literally sleeping on the floor in the police station. Um, I recently been back. They're not there anymore. 
um, and they probably more than likely have been relocated to somewhere else. So t- April 15, 2024, I'm seeing large buildings in the middle of the city um, being rehabilitated and turned into residential areas for people that don't have homes. Um, we're seeing this. Um, I'm not going to not talk about it as small as this platform is. I'm going to speak on it and I'm going to let people know what I see because all I see in these news platforms are people bashing um, black politicians in Chicago and black officials in Chicago. So I'm going to use my platform to support them and speak positively of them and as best as I can. Um, Right now, it's really tough. Um, Tiffany Henyard um, situation in Dalton. Um, Basically, there's being there's there's um accusations of fraud being um placed on her and people are basically um the media is kind of like putting her in like a bad spotlight about you know apparently there's some sort of fraud going on with the police force in Dalton um I've been meaning to talk about this for a while it's been going on for a while they've been talking about it back and forth so um yeah man um with these type of things, you don't really know about these people until this stuff is publicized. Tiffany Henyard isn't somebody that I've ever like, yo, I need to know about this woman. Um, reading through these cases and reading through these articles, I know that they're, you know, um, kind of uh, put, they're, they're kind of placed in like, they're kind of like jaded against her. So obviously I don't take these articles um, serious all the way. I kind of like, you know, just... I almost kind of, you know, you see what they leave, you see what they put in there and you see what they leave out. And anybody, and like I I said this in the last episode, black officials, white officials, Latina officials, these are people that come from the community or from other communities and decide to take responsibility for roles in the community. Now, if you're doing this wrong, if you're if you are committing fraud or if you are doing this type of stuff and it's like you know these accusations are true then of course we can't look at them as accusations but right now they're accusations <laughs> in my Rick Ross accusations and um you know I I love to see black women in positions of power for the people and in, in fighting for the people I'm not going to compare her to Lori Lightfoot but I like to see black women in power in positions of power. And it's sad to see that the media is eating her up like this. Um, you would think, you know, and like I said, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm a music engineer. I'm a visual media curator, dude. You know what I'm saying? Some of these setups might not necessarily say that because this is kind of like a really thrown together thing. But, you know, how I do stuff um, for me, the composition and the the images used specifically photos and court photos and court hearing photos and specific stills on these news articles that are publicized with headlines you know i feel like they are completely tarnishing her reputation in the media and i feel like it should be held i feel like it should be handled differently um and you know i can't necessarily speak for tiffany henyard i don't know if she's you know doing that but you see how you, you see how this is like the context of it begins as though she's being accused so we can't view her as anything else but um you know i'm just going to speak on it briefly because i know so very little but that just shows you the context in which she's being introduced into you know my mind frame or anyone else's and that's what the media does you know and we're seeing this um i'm gonna speak about that with bj with, with brian with brandon johnson you know dude and i'm gonna say this as well she's a woman you know what i'm saying there should be there should be penalties there should be there should be rules against depicting not just women but officials incorrectly or badly f- literally f- bad pictures of these people put on media websites with with headlines i feel like it's wrong you know what i'm saying um and people know how the media works people know how they re- how people receive things they see the first the first five words they look at that picture and that's what's going on you know what i'm saying and um hopefully people will kind of like get out of that mind frame as like, you know, um, media advances and people's political opinions develop as, you know, technology enables us to. But um, yeah, man, it's something to see, you know, black officials take a lot of heat in Chicago and the people know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? The people of Dalton know what's going on. Uh, I got family in Dalton. I got a lot of family in Dalton. 
um, I got family in Chicago. I'm from Chicago. We know what's going on. You know, we're here um, benefiting from what's, you know, the solutions to these problems, but yet they're still depicted as though, you know, I'm not going to talk too long about this because I'm not a black official in Chicago, but yo, um, some of that ain't what's going on and we got to speak on it. So yeah, man. Um, shout out, uh, shout out Brandon Johnson. Um, one of the best mayors and one of the few mayors that I have witnessed come to solutions for what's going on. And yeah, man, just, you know, sit tight for this type of stuff and, and really do your research. You know, um, if you're not here, you can't know, but, um, dude, we gotta do our, we gotta do our research and really see what's going on with these people and see what they're doing to make these things change because they are, you know, um, and that's all I'm gonna say on that. Um, on the music tip, sir just dropped a crazy sleeper album. Um, I have yet to kind of like really throw it in the rotation of my music. When I tell you this album bumps, I feel like it's one of his best projects. I'm not a huge Sir fan, but I love everything he's on. I love all of his singles. And um, obviously John Raycorn. I hate saying that because that's like low level fan. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, he just dropped the album. Um, there's a song on there with Ty Dolla Sign that I love. And everybody go check out that new Sir album, man. I loved it. Um, I'm gonna put some of my favorite tracks on here after I um, come back and look at this. But yeah, man, shout out Sir and um, shout out TDE. I don't know if he's still with TDE. I'm pretty sure he might still be with TDE. And shout out TDE. Shout out Kendrick Lamar. For um, let's talk about this Kendrick Lamar stuff, right? Let's talk about this Drake, J Cole, and Kendrick. Lamar. I have no notes about this, but I'm gonna talk about it, right? Okay. Let's talk about facts first. I love Kendrick Lamar. I love J. Cole. And I love Drake. Do I think that Kendrick Lamar, pound for pound, is the guy to diss everybody at one time? Yes. If anything, that's almost kind of that dude's job. <laughs> I feel like he for sure should be the guy like, yo, what's everybody doing? Let's get it popping. <laughs> for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, and that's now kind of like seeing the down, like the falling action of it all. That's what's going on. It's not like, you know, a bad blood thing. It's more or less kind of like a sportsman thing that I'm kind of seeing. And it's not like, you know, I'm fucking your wife or nothing crazy, like crazy shit like that. Um, This is April 15th. I'm hearing this. I don't know if it's AI or what, which is kind of fucked, but... <laughs> This is, I'm hearing this Drake um, return diss. Um, I don't want to just out back say it sucks, but it's very lack. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's not, it didn't give me like, you know, Kendrick Lamar level diss. I feel like Drake went harder for Meek. You know what I'm saying? I feel like back to back was way harder than, than this, than this return diss. Um, I don't even know the name of it. Yeah, some that has nothing that's beside the point. But some shit. listening to it off back, um, I think he like dropped like Kai and I had to kind of tell me about it, and I'm like, yo, it's not, it's not like, it's not what I, ex I expected him to come back way harder than that, and it kind of just sounds, you know, Drake is always kind of like I always hold him to this standard, especially when you're talking about back to back, head to head rapping, and it just didn't do it for me. Um, J Cole drops might delete later now in my mind this was like a response to whatever happened initially but this is clearly an album you know what i'm saying this is clearly a project that's not like i, I mean it's so vague that you can't necessarily say like okay this is about each and every one of them now it's a bunch of different side stories and made up bullshit about yo this is what that's about and this is what this about say bro name <laughs> i'm so that you know what i'm saying um this it should be like directed to my guy you know what i'm saying and it's very vague The might delete later is very it's, i'm not gonna say that doesn't mean that it's a bad project out of the entire situation um not type shit but um uh we don't trust you might delete later is much better than we don't trust you um i love type shit i'm a huge y'all know i'm a playboy cardi fanatic um y'all know i'm a future fanatic to a certain extent and y'all know how much I love Travis Scott. I'm a Travis Scott fanatic to a certain extent. And 
for me, type shit is the album. Um, Might Delete Later blows that album out of the water sonically. And I hate to say sonically because that shit is so head. But sound wise, yo, Might Delete Later just sounds better than everything that they just kind of like put into this album. And it may be because of the, the production style. It may be because, you know, Metro Boomin doesn't make stuff like that. And I'm not comparing the two projects. I'm just saying like, you know, let's talk about the quality of this music, right? Um... We got a 16, we got 30 seconds of Kendrick Lamar saying fuck the big three. And then we have type shit. And then we have, it's April 15th. So there's, I don't know if this is a deluxe version or like another, like a part, like a, a, a like a, a two disc of like, we still, it's, it's called, we still don't trust you and we don't trust you. It's two different projects. <clears throat> I'm going to say this real quick. Do I, does anybody have not, does anybody have an hour to listen to music? Most people don't. Um, I'm a music head. So for me, it felt like a lot. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, it's kind of overwhelming. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I almost kind of didn't even really fully digest. Um, we don't trust you. The, the first one. April 15th. I don't know if it was today or yesterday. They've dropped. Uh, yeah, I think it was yesterday. They've dropped another, like a, a second disc. Do, do I think it was necessary? No. Um, But obviously this, I think it's still produced by Metro Boomin. I think this was just like a large series of music that they're trying to create and make palatable for, you know, um, for what people are trying to hear. So I think that this is like, you know, them kind of like interlacing the two, the three um, artists and kind of like making it like, you know, something to beef about. Um, do I see something wrong with that? No, I feel like that's sportsmanship. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's what rap, that's what like, you know, that's kind of like the energy of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what's kind of what's supposed to happen, right? Or whatever. You diss him, I diss him, we diss him. But I'm dissatisfied with Drake's return. And I don't know if it's, you know, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure he'll maybe like put a project out behind this, but I wasn't really like, you know, and you know, I'm a, you guys know how much I take production serious. You know what I'm saying? I think that was a big part of, you know, that kind of like, you know, falling kind of deaf on the ear. It was like, yo, this is like 20, this isn't even like 2015 Drake. That's like straight up 2020 Drake. <laughs> and I was sad to see that. I'm like, yo, you hotter than this right now. <laughs> that's what kind of made me mad about the diss. I'm like, yo, the Drake shit that's coming out now is harder than, than this fucking diss. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is, man. Um, I'm not even going to talk too long about it because it ain't much to talk about. Like I said, like it's a lot to talk about, but it really ain't shit to say. Um, I'm going to say this to, to in conclusion. I don't see these bitches shaking their ass to Kendrick Lamar. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say that. I feel like ain't nobody going to say that. Motherfucker saying like, yo, ain't nobody going to diss Kendrick Lamar. He going to outrap any nigga. These hoes not shaking their ass to Kendrick Lamar. I'm sorry. And that's just facts. You know what I'm saying? And maybe you, maybe a motherfucker say that's not hip hop. Uh, but I feel like that's a part of hip hop. Like if these motherfuckers not turned to your shit, you know what I'm saying? These people not turned to your shit. And that's for Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? Um, the last album. Um, I still want, I, I, I want more from that. that. That last album wasn't wild for me. For me, J.I.D. got these bitches shaking their ass. Kendrick, you don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I'm a huge, and if you know me for real, you know how much I love Kendrick Lamar. I love Kendrick. Um, Chapter 6, Chapter 10. I love Kendrick Lamar, bro. Want to be heard. I'm one of them, like, yo, I am one of them, like, Kendrick fans. Um, P.G. Lane Kendrick, not a huge fan. Not. And I feel like, you know, the best rapper out, he still has that belt for sure. Like he can out rap anybody in the game, but these bitches not shaking their ass to Kendrick. That's facts. Um, And, you know, he got songs like the Hillbilly, you know, you got the new Keem shit. You got shit that's like, you know, turnt, but you know, I think, 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 I think we want that Kendrick. And I'm sorry, bro. These bitches not shaking their ass to this. Um. 
it's not in my library and I, I just, it's, it's, it's not, it wasn't like one of, it's definitely not untitled. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody kind of wants untitled Kendrick, but then people still want, you know, they want backseat freestyle. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they want not backseat freestyle. They want rigor mortis Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? We want, um, high power Kendrick. We want, um, blow my high Kendrick. Everybody wants to blow my high Kendrick. Man. And this shit, not that. So for him to kind of be like, fuck the big three. I'm the only motherfucker here. Man, kind of no. And J. Cole just kind of sh just shitted on everybody in that situation. Um, but, you know, when you really, you know, I don't like talking about it like that because they're kind of like, t the people that are here watching this podcast are here for music. They know what the fuck's going on. So I'm like, yo, all of that shit, this shit not as good as this. <laughs> I was like, yo, this not making, kind of not making sense. But in the grand scheme of it all, I know it all makes sense. But yeah, man, might delete later. Um, I'm glad to see a great full project. Apparently, this is not done with Republic, but this is with Interscope. This is like with a different, a completely different label. So shout out them. Um, Y'all know how much I love Interscope. Oh, <laughs> shout out them. Shout out J. Cole. And shout out Boz. Uh, uh, this, the song that he has with Boz, um, the song that he has with Boz, um, I can't remember the name of it. That's that's my one of my, that's probably my favorite track on there. And um yeah, man, might delete later. That shit is hard, bro. Um, and um, we still don't trust you is another project that just dropped. This is April fifteenth, so we gotta check that out. And um, yeah, man, Kendrick Lamar. This is the entire big three. It's not the big three anymore, dude. I'm sorry. There's some other shit I'm gonna say about that too. I mean, we got time, right? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we got time. It, there is no big three. <laughs> I, I I feel like he was kind of too comfortable saying that. Like, yo, big three. Like, y'all niggas not. <laughs> Bryson is here, bro. Bryson Tiller is here, bro. Um, Chris Brown is here, bro. Um, yo, y'all aren't the big three. People aren't. This is not the biggest three people that people are paying attention to in rap anymore, dude. So, honestly, I feel like he was kind of wrong in saying big three. There is no more big three. Um... Like I said, bro, it's a lot of artists that are that have come out since there was the big three that are like, you guys are not the big three anymore, you know? Um, Sexy Red, <laughs> yo, um, I mean, yo, SZA, um, you know, like Anisha, uh, Anisha, yo, like uh, Anisha, uh, uh, Caribou, uh, the Concrete Boys, like yo, like Yachty, yo, <laughs> Yachty, bro, like. Y'all are not the big three. Um, and I mean, I say this with the utmost disrespect. I mean, I say this with the utmost respect because I love all of those. I love, I love Drake. I love Kendrick and I love J. Cole. I'm not saying those guys in order at all, but y'all aren't, it's not a big three. <laughs> it's not, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I mean, I, I feel like my musical opinion is like, you know, respected amongst the urban community and amongst the urban entertainment and urban music community, bro. Like, dude. We didn't bump that. And I say that with a, you know, I say that with like a kind critiquing heart, you know, like that big three shit hasn't been like that since like, I mean, it was, if you're reading this is too late, Kendrick could come out and say that. Fuck the big three. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, we all going crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, dude. Y'all, I mean, and not to say they getting old or nothing like that or like, you know, they, they falling off. Nah, like, I don't like that energy either. That's not the type of potter that I am. But yo, nah, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, it's it's a lot of new artists out here that y'all that, 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 that should be worried about. Facts. Big facts. It's a lot of new artists out here that's like, yo, kind of shitting on that shit type shit. <laughs> you feel me? They just, I mean, it's, it is what it is, though. Um. And um, yeah, man, my delete later. I can't really, I can't really say. I um, it's it's almost kind of disqualified as a return to whatever diss it was because he's got features on it, and those artists don't necessarily have beef with those artists. I don't even think that this is real beef. Um, this is tofu. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is uh, this is turkey. This is not beef, man. This is like you know, that's like impossible beef. You know what I'm saying? This is impossible beef burger. So whatever man you know um 
I'm hope I'm hoping to see some new good music from Kendrick that's like you know really good and um and I'm hoping to see that Drake project man we all everybody is all the time so <laughs> more than any of this I mean and that's probably just from my own musical palette bro I'm excited to see Donald Glover put some more stuff out bro honestly I'm more excited about the Childish Gambino project than this honestly um Beyonce has a country album out and apparently people keep juxtaposing her to Taylor Swift for some fucking weird reason um I don't think anybody really cares about that shit though I'm not even gonna talk about that shit cause nobody really cares um and there's more serious shit to talk about dude OJ Simpson just died I'm gonna get back on that um OJ Simpson died bro wow like this shit is crazy bro um April 15, 2024, man. Um he I think he died the day before yesterday. Um he he died he died of cancer. Um personally, the way I've seen some of my podcast friends or, you know, I I'm not going to say idols, but some of my f- podcast inspirations and the way that they kind of are addressing this is like, you know, I'm sure it's all in good joke and good light lightheartedness, but yo, people are people. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if that was like, you know, your fucking uncle or some shit like that, you know? Um, we got to watch how we, you know, address these people and, um, in, 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 in their, in their, while they're gone from this earth. Um, for me, I feel like OJ Simpson, I was born in 97, bro. I honestly don't give a fuck about OJ Simpson's case. Um, his athletic career, I feel like may have helped and been more of an influence than his scandal his case and him taking the life of someone else as accused or if so um the things that he's done after that to help to change that opinion of himself or whatever you know that trial happened years ago Uh, a, a person's life lost will be forever um fuck him he's a fucking murderer we don't care that he's dead no no and we gotta and you know we gotta we gotta understand that these platforms and the things that we're saying on these things yo they're it's going to live forever so we gotta be careful how we're speaking on these people you know what i'm saying um do i think that man was a human being do i think that man had had the world's best at his best interest do i think that he, he may have gotten away from himself and took the life of another person. Does that make him not a human being? Does that make his soul not valued? No. I'm going to say that. Um, will I spit on his grave? No. And that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's something that you, it's, it's so many things like, yo, I'm, t- I'm 27 years old. Um, I don't know much about what the fuck happened with that shit. Um, the glove don't fit. You must have quit. Um, Cochran, um, black people don't, you know what I'm saying? Black people believe he did. I feel like that stigma is almost gone. Like there are black people now that truly believe like, yeah, that nigga did that shit. And as this, you know, and we're living in this information age in this, you know, this era of time in which, you know, truth start being, and everything is coming to light, you know, and the technology is there or whatever. So, you know, that nigga did that shit and never paid for it or whatever, that mind frame applied to that man going in the ground and his people making funeral arrangements. No, I'm not going to talk bad about that guy. No, I could never bring myself to do it. <clears throat> Did he do wrong? You know, that's how I look at that shit. And um, people will say, I guess that's playing both sides of the fence. But, you know, um, if I killed somebody and and it was publicized all over GMA or whatever, and I lived the rest of my life and then died. And then I, I got to wherever I, my destination was in the afterlife. And then I found out that, yo, these people still don't love me. It'd be devastating. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, we got to be careful how we talk about these people. I'm not going to get too far on that because I'm not perfect. But it is what it is, you know. Um, What else was we going to talk about? All right. <laughs> I know this is what y'all was all kind of waiting for. This is what I was waiting for. What 
Will they hang Diddy? <laughs> are they gonna hang this man or are they gonna just keep on burning him at the stake? Um I don't feel like for me, I feel like hip hop is swallowing itself. Um if you ever seen a video of a snake kind of like out of his shit and eating itself, that's what hip hop looks right now. That's how hip hop looks like right now. We got a bunch of people speaking for revolt <laughs> and Diddy's like standing in a house on fire. <laughs> literally, like, you know, um, uh, metaphorically, obviously, but like almost fucking literally, right? Um, I'm going to say this. This is already common knowledge, but it's April 15th. I'm late on speaking about it. And this is a part of the reason why I, I mean, I, like I told y'all, you guys, I, I had trouble kind of getting back into this pod mode, but yo, they are fucking crucifying P. Diddy. They are crucifying the fuck out of this nigga. And, um, you know, Snapchat isn't above talking uh, anything. Uh, Snapchat isn't above speaking about anything. S- Snapchat isn't my main news source. I don't give a fuck what they put up there sometimes, but they are fucking Snapchat completely tabloid completely walk every other advertisement type shit every other post crucifying the fuck out of p diddy have i seen one fucking post from miami from from young miami from 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 her no i haven't seen one fucking thing from from carisha i haven't seen one i'm gonna say what this is this is independent this is an independent pod i'm gonna say what the fuck i want to say we i haven't seen shit from anybody else and this shit get cold (laughs) that's what i'm seeing with this shit like they fucking walking up on my mans he coming i don't know if he was coming out the fucking gym wow we man (laughs) yo 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 when i fucking tell you we gotta it's a lot to talk about but not much to say that's gotta be the name of this podcast man it's a lot to talk about but not much to say Let's, let me get back to what I was saying. They walking up on this guy. You know, paparazzi is paparazzi. They, I mean, you're going to get what the fuck you're going to get. But they are fucking crucifying this man. And to see the Cassie situation come and go out of coverage. You know what I'm saying? This is what I, I'm, I'm speaking from, you know. Me and you me and you are sitting on the couch. Um, I'm not seeing anything about Cassie anymore. Um... And I'm almost kind of like reflectively like, yo, like Diddy and Carisha, like she's, is, is this, is this what this is about? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and now it's kind of like, you know, this like bullshit trick or treat game or like this kind of like bullshit, like deeper information. If you want to know what really happened, dangling game of like, yo, every, like, if you really want to know what happened, this is what happened. And everybody's kind of playing that card of if you really want to know what happened. You know what I'm saying? And even kind of money wall monetizing the bullshit of like, if you really want to know what happened, pay $12.99 and you'll, you know what I'm saying? Literally, like we're seeing this shit. It's 2024. You know what I'm saying? And it's sick as fuck. I pray to God it's not really like, you know, what that is, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I spoke that shit into existence because I'm going to personally speak it into existence so it can't fucking happen again. Surviving R. Kelly, surviving P. Diddy surviving so-and-so surviving whoever fuck that shit and it should stop that's one of the first things i said when this podcast began you know what i'm saying and we all still gonna get up here and hip hop hip to the hip it hip it hop but don't stop and fuck p diddy but hip hop fuck no and that's how i feel bro. for real like, it's hard for me to get like you know what i'm saying like real shit like it really like dead ass it took me a lot to get into this pod bro because i'm like yo When I say hip hop is a snake swallow, have you, if you got to see, I'm going to try to put a picture up of this shit. This is what the fuck hip hop looks like right now. A fucking snake swallowing itself, eating itself a fucking live. Y'all some fucking snakes and y'all don't know who the fuck snaking y'all and can't nobody touch me. That's how I fucking look at hip hop right now. Dead ass. I said this shit to be, I, I said, this, I'm like, yo, I wish the fuck would somebody come out and say they my fucking manager. I don't fucking know you. I got an attorney. I got a fuck. I got my family. I, I don't. I don't have. A, I don't have no artist attorney, nigga. I'm not in the industry. Facts. 
I started seeing that shit, and, and this is, yo, mm -hmm, I'm good. After I saw this shit happen the last couple of months, how the fuck y'all doing this? I said, yep, I'm good. I told niggas I was going to do this shit by myself. I said that shit in 2020, but that's beside the point, man. We still got Revolt, and we still got these, you know, we got these major hip, major media platforms still hold, still holding life, and this is happening. You know what I'm saying? And part of me just wants to kind of sit until it's just proven hoax or just, you know, false hoax or whatever. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and I'm not speaking in favor of Puff because I don't know what the fuck he did. But, yo, this is hip hop, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, His son, you know what I'm saying? This is like, yo, these was the, this is the new face of hip hop, yo. Straight up. And I'm mad because I want to see his son do all that shit. I want to see his son take off. That shit blew me. You know what I'm saying? And it made me kind of like, you know, even as an artist, I like to kind of have aspirations to kind of like do something that's involved with the industry. I'm like, fuck no. You niggas, fuck no. I never let you niggas touch my name. Taking my shit out. I said that shit when I saw, I'm like, yo, are you fucking kidding me, you guys? And I said that shit too. I'm like, yo, nah, this is unbelievably distasteful. The way that they putting that shit on Snapchat and the way that they don't nobody care. And it's like, yo, we just going to run it up. It's a lot to talk about, but it ain't much to fucking say. I told them niggas, nah. Straight the fuck up. Um, Chris Brown assaults somebody in the club. We're going to talk about something else. Um, Chris Brown assaults somebody in the club. Um, he just reached, apparently there's like another deluxe version of 1111. Um, hip hop is, hip hop is swallowing itself, yo. And I'm not going to say Chris Brown is hip hop, but he is. It's R and B. I feel like that energy until that energy is gone, bro. We never going to really truly have, um, people never, it's never going to be right. It's never going to be truly safe for artists. You know what I'm saying? It's never like the artist is no longer appreciated. You know what I'm saying? Fandom. Excuse me. Um, lunacy, idiocracy, and just completely just barbarianism is not fandom. And is not, you know what I'm saying? You pressing a motherfucker outside and I'm outside and you, hey, yo, woo, 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 check in. Nigga, that's not fandom. It's, it's goofy. Straight the fuck up. We don't move like that in the city. We don't. Facts. I don't know them niggas. And also that's some other shit I was seeing. I'm like, I could believe that. He probably stuck the fuck out somebody or some shit. I'm like, yeah, it probably happened. That's some small little new shit. They talked about that real quick and let it go because it's Chris Brown. Facts. But that shit didn't even go long. Um, Y'all know how much I love Chris Brown. I'm like, I hope they don't do this to him. You know what I'm saying? Um, Nobody's safe. I'm starting to believe nobody's safe with this shit. Yeah, you and you're fucking right. You know, um, nobody's above the law, right? Nobody is above the law, and like I, I think I said this in another episode, bro. I'm still looking for these fucking artists, bro. Y'all paying, y'all got six figure attorneys. Why the fuck y'all can't handle shit outside of the media? If it's really a problem, why the fuck y'all can't handle this shit outside of the media? Y'all got six figure attorneys and shit like that, and like PR firms and shit like that, and this shit still get out. Y'all want that. And that's what I'm starting to learn. I'm like, yo, as an artist, you niggas will never touch my shit. Ever. You know what I'm saying? We'll never touch your shit. Well, you'll never have it. <laughs> the best thing for any artist in 2024 is to completely be a one. Be, now, I'm not going to say, say be a one man show because that's, that's what I do. And that's what I see a few other niggas do. But the best thing that an artist can do is stay the fuck out the industry. Stay the fuck out the industry because these niggas not doing shit. These niggas getting... These niggas not doing shit, bro, at all. And keep your editorial control. I just watched an interview. I would just watch Drink Champs, man. And I just watched Stephen A. Smith talk about, speak about editorial control. And it's one of the most important fucking things that you can like literally um, have and own within this, this industry or this entertainment, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like, yo, editorial control is essential. This is the time we're in right now. Like, I'm going to tell my side. 
you're going to tell your side and that's it. I hate to bring up old shit because I'm pretty sure it's, you know, dead and gone or whatever. They probably like, you know, patched it up or whatever. Kanye West walking in the drink champs with his cameras out. Yo, this is, I'm filming regard, like, yo, editorial control or like my point of view of whatever the fuck is going on is going to be captured. You know what I'm saying? Or it's going to be, you know, it's my side of the story is not going to not be heard. If anything, he probably did that to protect himself, not to be, you know what I'm saying? Which is crazy. I got to, I got to, nowadays, these niggas got to pull up live streaming wherever they're at to have their point of view respected. Nigga, I'll never talk to you. I'll never talk to you. Funny shit or not. Nigga, I'll never talk to you. And we'll never be on the same page. This will never, like our paths will never fucking cross. You niggas are crazy. Like dead ass. Like it's a lot of shit. To, it's very little shit to be kind of happy about with the entertainment industry now. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't really want to get on. That's why it took me so long to kind of get back to this pod with a bunch of other shit. But like, yo, this shit is bad. They fucking my guy up. Like fucking Beyonce and Solange ass shit, bro. Y'all are two fucking men. Why the fuck do y'all lose y'all cool when a camera phone comes out? Facts. I'm not talking to you niggas, bro. And that's just that's just it. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the things I learned this year. Like, bro, editorial control, respect for your brand, and like, yo, uniformity within its aesthetic. Utmost respect to Kai Sinat. Utmost respect to all the all the pods in the pod world or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like, you know, one of these guys that's like, oh. You know what I'm saying? My pot, like, yo, I, I know I know the ears that I touch. And for me, I know everybody's kind of looking at it. Like, I know motherfucker going to kind of cut this shit on. Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, he right. Yeah, like, this shit is, like, fucking insane right now, bro. Like, I got to fucking turn my computer off and, like, go fucking actually do some shit. Because you niggas are pissing me off. <laughs> like, for real, bro. I'm like, yo, like, this shit is sad. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even, like... This shit, this 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 shit gotta be. I feel like I I hold these people to like a higher standard, but they're fucking human beings, dude. Um, like, I'm 27 years old. Um, I've held a mic on stage with Erica Badu. Um, I performed in front of thousands of people before. Uh, I feel accomplished in this shit. I don't really like, I don't take this shit serious. It's, I don't take this shit as serious as like some of these people fucking do. Like I know I will never perform at MSG. Like I'll never, this is some shit that like I'm not doing because this is where the game is going. And I know how old I am. I know how long I want to be doing this. I'm like, yo, this shit, like like this past year and this year, before, you know, since 2020, I've we've watched kind of like this snake get further and further of like just swallowing what's left of hip hop and entertainment. I'm not saying hip hop is dead. I'm saying hip hop is like, yo, struggling right now. Straight the fuck up. Kanye West can't release music. We want money. We want more money from Kanye West. Or we're blackballing Kanye West or whatever the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? And and he's anti-Semitic or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? We really watching this shit like kind of like fizzle out. And I'm like, you know, I'm looking at this shit like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like, even in, even, even from like, you know, from a fan point of view, it's like, it's disheartening. I got to find other shit to consume myself with. You know what I'm saying? And that's important. Every, you know, all of the artists that watch this pod, all of the visual artists that watch this pod, all of the Chicagoans that watch this pod, all of the people from all the Louisianimals that watch this pod, all of my grand fam, all of my grandmally that watch this pod. Make sure that you have your own creative outlet that you can express yourself in and be enthralled in and be engulfed in aside from just this shit, aside from these reality TV shows and these college hills and these anti-Semitic remarks and these fight videos and these ex- so-and-so Kais and that getting exposed. And I don't even want to fucking talk about it because it's fucking stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not going to talk about no shit. I got to like, ah. You know what I'm saying? Go back and bite my tongue about pit. Like this shit, this shit is crazy. 
And I'm not just wagging my finger at everybody because I'm not fucking perfect, but shit, wow. It got wild within that point of time. Real talk. Since I like last talked to y'all, shit got even wilder. Um, the passing of Mr. C. DJ, I mean, this has nothing to do with anything. It's beside the point, but it's not an unimportant. Um, Mr. C passed, DJ Mr. C passed. Um hugely renowned DJ. Um, rest his soul. I'm not too, I'm not too up about in, about his career, but rest his soul and um you know we gotta we I, I feel like the sportsmanship with this hip hop thing is like you know it's it's uplifting and that's what I'm kind of seeing about that that's, that's not what I'm mad about you know what I'm saying I never got to talk about what's going on with Diddy you know what I'm saying and it's disheartening whether he did this shit or not and how everybody's kind of just like fuck it we still turn like yo this shit's sad but that's their job you know what I'm saying so as a fan we taking that shit hard on God. Um, and I'm from Chicago. I can only imagine, like, you know what I'm saying? The New York area, whatever, however they're taking it, or like whatever the scandal, like how everybody knows in Miami or whatever, however is whatever the secrets, all the shit. I refuse to subscribe to it and I refuse to be there's some other shit I was gonna say. I'm gonna say this real quick too. Don't be so thirsty to know what really happened. These motherfuckers love telling a motherfucker what really happened. On God, what really happened. These motherfuckers gonna charge you twelve ninety nine to know what really happened. I see it happen if, and eventually. Like, yo, don't nobody know, but this what really happened. Thirteen ninety nine, twelve ninety nine. Come on and find out. And yo, dumbass gonna click that shit. Don't be so fucking thirsty to find out what really happened, because everybody know what really happened. Everybody know what really happened. I don't like that shit, and I don't like how motherfuckers just got ghost. I'm not gonna say I'm a huge City Girls fan. I'm not gonna lie. Um. Where the fuck she go? Facts. This podcast is independent. <laughs> this podcast is funded independently through independent resources. I'm going to say what the fuck I'm going to say. Where the fuck did she go? <laughs> I haven't seen shit from her. I haven't heard shit from her. Is it about her? Is it about the is it is it about several people? What is it? Whatever it is, why can't this shit be handled behind court doors? That's all I'm going to say. And then we done with Diddy. I'm not going to keep talking about this shit, but I never got a chance to say it. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. You know what I'm saying? Are they going to hang this man or are they just going to keep burning him at the fucking thingy? Not on a lighter note, but um, one of my fellow um, cinematographers, he's from Detroit. Um, one of the big, one of, uh, one of the biggest um, cinematographers. I'm not, yeah. One, a, a huge cinematographer from Detroit. One of my biggest um, vlogging inspirations um ins ins inspirations for sure um Volandis um just recently publicized and let everybody know that he's battling cancer um he has a GoFundMe he has a public GoFundMe that I want y'all to check out I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in the description um y'all pray for Volandis um he's one of the dopest like he's he, I mean he a, a lot of what he does inspired my aesthetic for what I do for a lot of my different things me and him don't do the same things, but I do. I, I I'm inspired by a lot of the stuff he does. Um, Y'all pray for Volandis, and um, you know, if you got like two fifty in your PayPal, go ahead and just you know slide whatever you can to to his GoFundMe. I am too, and man, y'all just send prayers. You know, um, this is a you know this, and I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak it into fruition that he beats this, and I hope that you do too. Whether I don't know what you do, um, you know, verbally manifest or pray or ha whatever you do for this to, you know, for him to beat this fight with cancer. Um, yeah, man, y'all pray for Volandis and um, shout out to you if he if he does ever see this and um, shout out to him, man. Y'all pray for him. I'm I'm gonna take some time to just kind of talk about myself for a while. Um, <clears throat> April twenty twenty April twenty twenty four. Um. I'm fucking tired of better help. <laughs> I would say that shit for every fucking person watching YouTube, every YouTuber. Yo, I'm so fucking tired of y'all giving us bullshit therapy solutions and kind of like making us like, yo, over consume the advertisement and the marketing of it. Yo, therapy is not the solution for every person. 
a lot of and a lot of the things that they are claiming to fix with it that is what rehab does this is some shit i was saying yo therapy is not rehab and what a lot of people are dealing with right now that better help and some of these other alternative like over the phone like give me a hundred dollars i'll talk to you for an hour for a week like yo that's not that's not even fucking therapy and also what we need to understand is is that therapy is not rehab you know what i'm saying um i've been to rehab several times yo um and it really helped a lot i've been in <laughs> rehabilitation centers i've been with you know i've spoken with therapists i've been in therapy i've been in counseling counseling therapy and rehab are three totally different things i am fucking tired of seeing better help ads bro unbelievably tired of seeing that shit <laughs> this shit is funny to me and i think now people are kind of like i think it's more of like you know anything to kind of find yourself approved in within a forum is what this is and i'm gonna say this shit again because i really want you to hear me anything that people can do to be approved of within a public forum they will do and i think that better help kind of like plays on the on the the need of mental health you know what i'm saying these people want to feel like i'm mentally healthy you know what i'm saying and you got companies like this kind of coming in and saying like yo this is what you need get it and you will feel better it's not going to do that for you it may but that's usually more than likely not going to help you and you need to really like yo dead ass find a real therapist dead ass use your use your health care dead ass get your medic really get medic and really talk to an actual physical therapist not physical therapist but actually physically talk to an actual therapist that shit is not what that is and it's more or less like you know companionship you know what i'm saying it's like a um it's like a companionship service that i'm kind of noticing you know what i'm saying it's like that does not that does not serve the purpose of therapy for the world it doesn't but it helps you know what i'm saying i, I mean i'm not gonna knock it because at least they're trying to change what mental you know they're trying to help the mental health of people by the masses which you know is good but it's not what the fuck it is you know what i'm saying it's it's not what that is i feel like anybody with like you know some of these people are just kind of like you know sheep minded and will kind of be susceptible to something like that you know so yeah man it's just that's something i want to talk about too like everybody kind of knows that one bad bitch that went to school for social you know for uh psychology she's like a psych major and she just she can help everybody but her fucking self and the world is just full of those now you know what i'm saying like you know and if if they can make a check from it they will um be aware of be aware of of of, of when you're putting your mind into form those things are all of the every all of it is is taken record of none of that is confidential um none of that is confidential and it may feel as though it is but it's not be aware when you're putting your mind into form you know what i'm saying and also um you know you're kind of giving these people the rights to like reconstruct you or like or or critique your mind frame you know what i'm saying and i believe in some form of fashion you pay for it i don't know if it's free or if you pay for it or what or if it's like it's a business <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's a business you know so be aware of that shit that's all i'm gonna say and i'm not knocking that shit but it's strange to see you know and, and, it, and it's you know the world is changing you know so it's a solution you know it's, it's, it definitely gives more people to talk about talk it gives it gives an avail it creates an availability of people of, of somebody of a listening ear so you can hear you know but hey find a real therapist dude you know what I'm saying? Like, really talk to somebody for real. You know, um, and like I said, man, don't 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 keep you know throwing your your feelings up into the sky into a phone or whatever and just feeling like it's gonna get back. You know what I'm saying? Find a real therapist. Uh, that's all I really want to say. I, mean, I don't even know how the fuck I got on that subject, but um, yeah, man, it's 2024. <clears throat> Hold on, let me get some fucking water. On some me shit. <laughs> on some me shit, man. Like. <clears throat> I can I can honestly say for myself as like speaking about myself, I'm definitely like a late bloomer. I learned a lot very late. Um in my opinion, man, I was kind of like underexposed as a child to like, you know, all of this stuff that the world truly is. Um 
and to kind of just see how the world like works you know from like an american and african-american point of view it's funny to see like march was such a crazy month and to kind of see like you know how how human the world truly is like yo like it didn't work out like like these like she didn't get called on february she didn't get called on february 14th she couldn't find the other guy february 25th and she's back on the market march 1st <laughs> and march 15th she hasn't found the guy march 30th where the fuck is my man <laughs> like it's crazy to see like what drives the energy of like you know the club um the the clothing stores uh she's gonna go buy that new outfit he's gonna go buy that new outfit or you know what i'm saying or like i'm moving or i'm well fuck this city i haven't found them i'm moving you know what i'm saying this shit is real and um every year <laughs> you know what i'm saying this is my i turned 27 this year so this is kind of like my first year like yo this kind of like really being analytical about my surroundings for real and Motherfuckers gonna be like, damn, nigga, for real? I'm be like, yeah, bro, I was in school. I was fucking famous. <laughs> I, I was doing my, I was living, I was me, bro. <laughs> uh, I was a fucking kid, you know what I'm saying? So, like, to kind of, like, just really sit back and see it and, like, absorb it. Like, yo, this shit happened every year, dog. Every year. Um, you know, and, and, or, you know, March, we getting ready for the baby. Like, yo, it's, it's that, like, every year. You know what I'm saying? And just to be, and just to see it, it's like, it's wild, you know? And, um, to kind of like, I guess, learn my place in society and know that it can change. And you know what I'm saying? It's it's not so much, it's not comforting. I'm not gonna say it's comforting, but it's, it is satisfying to see like, yo, I'm doing what I was brought here to do. Or I, I'm gonna do it if I, you know, I'm gonna do it either way. You know what I'm saying? Um, and to kind of like defeat these, these like big, mon these these mental monsters of like, you know, people trying to like give me my options i feel like a lot of dudes my age kind of struggle with that too like in their in their mid-20s or like in their late 20s of like yo motherfuckers steady trying to give me my options you know um not even just 20 somethings i feel like this year alone a lot of men was like yo <laughs> yo yeah, I got my options. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of men, period. Not even so much as just like, you know, young men, older men, uh, period. It was like, you know, equality. Let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Is Are we really? And, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a he man, woman, hater, basher, podcaster or, or anything like that. But you learn a lot. You know what I'm saying? This, this, this shit is wild. You know what I'm saying? And... I, you know, I'm doing a lot of writing. I'm making a lot of music. I just made a, I just wrote a song talking about, um, I said, it's real tough. It's real tough to see your wife on her knees with the same red lipstick that she put on your cheek when you leave to go to work. You know what I'm saying? It's different. It's different. And it's not like, you know, you could just be like, all right, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You can't be. And we watching a lot of our guys, we watching a lot of our icons get, you know, destroyed. I'm 27 years old, so it's like I, a lot of these, I, I got a lot of black male inspirations. And for the past 10 years, we just watching these niggas get ate up. You know what I'm saying? Um, Not so much ate up, but kind of like just, yeah, hey, you shouldn't take him as serious as you should. He's not really that. You know what I'm saying? And we see this, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, for me, not even just for me, but like kind of like speaking for the homies and just like the people that, you know, a lot of people would be like, yeah, I speak for this and I speak like, like I really know who I speak for. And it's, it's, this, it's depressing, it's disheartening, but it's also like, you know, it's teaching more than anything and it's, and it's liberating. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of men kind of like, and they like pack light vibe. You know what I'm saying? You got to kind of pack light emotionally. Um, post February energy, you know what I'm saying? Post Valentine's Day energy, and it's crazy to think that it's just something just as light, you know. Um, I'm not one of those dudes that's like fuck holidays or anything like that. Like, yo, I love celebrating holidays and doing shit and having fun just like anybody else. I celebrate Christmas. Um, my family still celebrates Christmas and and Thanksgiving, and we we celebrate those holidays. I know I might not share that commonality with everybody, but you know. To see that it's something that it's that's that simple, 
that can make or break, you know, relationships. It's, it's humanistically, is am I saying that? As a human, that's wild. You know what I'm saying? But it's what it's the driving force behind what a lot the behind what a lot of shit goes on. You know what I'm saying? And these women going check. I'm not gonna speak for these women because I can't. But these women gonna check these other women. Like he not. It's not that for you. You know what I'm saying? And they gonna make each other feel bad. You know what I'm saying? Um, we don't. I've never in my life heard one dude be like, "Damn, shorty, he ain't, like damn, bro, he ain't she ain't get you shit for sweetest day." Damn, bro, she, he ain't get you shit for she ain't get you shit for for Valentine's Day. I've never heard it in life. I've never heard that shit. You know what I'm saying? And not to just cast all the blame on on women, you know, but I don't know. We're all human beings. If you're a man, if you're a woman, we're all human beings. And I think that fight for equality is. I don't think it's, I mean, I don't really like respect that no more because what the fuck else? You know what I'm saying? On some shit, we're not. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the city, dog. We, uh, men aren't equal to women. <laughs> not women aren't equal to men. Dude, men aren't equal to women. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Um, And for me, it's like, yo, I'm going to turn my brim around so you see. For me, it's like, yo, the fight for equality is like it's not really it's not really true no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are y'all fighting for to be equal about? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not that no more. And you got to be careful when you moving out in these streets. You got to be careful. So, 2024. Don't nobody give a fuck if you tapped. And this the life we live in. Um. I'm going to stand behind editorial control for what I do. Um, Everybody know how much respect I got for women. Straight up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody know that. So, you know what I'm saying? I refuse to to hop into the industry and, and let and, and have that be changed. We know how easily, easily that can be changed. A motherfucker can wake up tomorrow and change how a motherfucker think you respect women on God. And that's some shit I'm learning. Facts. At a small scale, like not not leaving a crib, seeing a hundred people a day, seeing a thousand people a day. You know what I'm saying? So I move how I move. And it's it's something to see. You know what I'm saying? I'm not afraid to speak on it first. And that's why a lot of motherfuckers will probably be like, yo, you you shouldn't be talking about that. You fucked up. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say, cause ain't nobody else. I bet you these motherfuckers are fan they they'll come behind them and see it. Sex. The fight for women fighting for equality. The fuck else y'all need? The fuck else ain't equal? Facts. So, you know what I'm saying? And now it's like, it's entertainment. You know what I'm saying? To disassemble men and to disassemble a man's masculinity is just entertainment. You know what I'm saying? I said this in one of my other pods. Like, yo, a, a woman's womanhood never would, would never come into question. You can't question a woman's womanhood. But you can always question that a man has to earn his manhood. A man has to be is consistently in a man's manhood is consistently in question wherever he goes. And that's just the state of, you know what I'm saying? That's just, I mean, I'm not the fucking president, but yo, that's the state of the culture. That's the state of the whatever. Cause I'm like, yo, like this, this, this shit, yeah, y'all bugging. And they, you know what I'm saying? They talking about it, they not, they in it, they out. I'm like, yo, this shit, something gotta change. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna speak to my platform. I'm gonna speak to my ears, and I'm gonna like, like, like. If you here for this, chances are you already feel the same way. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, it's sad to see. And then the careers, and we're not even gonna, you know, get back into that because y'all know me. Y'all know my body. Y'all know how much I fuck with everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's April fifteenth. I don't want to see. We don't want to keep seeing black men get ruined in the media, bro. We don't. And they and they going they doing this shit to themselves. He he did it. He did that shit himself. That's do 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 do. Y'all getting a check, and we see this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like some of this shit, it don't matter if we click it. That check are that money already made. Facts, big facts. Motherfucker gonna watch this show and not understand what I mean by that. Facts. I can't wait to post this. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
Shout out to Stephen A. Smith, man. Editorial control. Um, and and if you don't understand what I mean by that, um, watch Funny Marco. If you don't know what I mean by editorial control, watch Kai Sinat. Study Kai Sinat. Study Funny Marco. You know what I'm saying? All my artists, all my fellow potters, all my fellow creatives that are watching this, understand and truly understand what editorial control is and understand that that is a huge power that you hold within which whatever your brand is, whatever you decide to do. Because that's where this shit going. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you want me, you're going to come here. And that's where the game, that's where, ever, that's where all of this is going. So, yeah. Um... Pay attention to, pay attention to, um, yo, these, like, like the code of this, some of this shit is changing. You know what I'm saying? If you're a real YouTuber, you see what the fuck is going on. I told him, put my shit back. <laughs> Facts. You know what I'm saying? Pay attention to this shit, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then, and learn from it. Most importantly, what's most importantly, most definitely, most indefinitely, most, most indefinitely, pay attention and learn. Like, motherfucker, be like you a snake. Uh, if you learn, if you really learn good, motherfucker, will call you a snake. Facts. You gotta, you, you, I mean, yo, and and put that money back in your pocket, and understand what your bottom line is. Um. So, I'm not. I, I, I like I said, like like I told y'all, yo, like it's a lot to talk about, but it ain't much to say. And 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 we really hoping, like you know. I mean, we got music to talk about. I love Glorilla's album. Um, Glorilla just dropped the album that's fucking cold. Um, I feel like it's, I must call it a sleeper because I know y'all not going to really bump it. Y'all not going to really, you know what I'm saying, fuck with it. But Glorilla just dropped a great project. That is a great album. I love it. And it's it's good stuff coming out. But like I said, man, it's a, it's a lot to talk about, but it ain't much to say. It's, it's I mean, that's why I'm glad I'm doing this shit independently because... I'm a, I, I mean, I gotta say what I gotta. I'm gonna say what the fuck I'm gonna say. Independent niggas tweaking, but you know what I'm saying. I know. It, I mean, yo, the people gonna hold it together. I told, like I said, this shit too. Like, yo, I see this rap shit, which is honestly, if you ask me, a small part of entertainment. It's it's a part of entertainment. It's not entertainment. I see this rap shit going to the people. You know what I'm saying. I see this music shit. This, the music industry, I see it going to the people and, and getting further into the people's hands, into the consumer's hands. Not, and I, I mean, not to disrespect Kendrick, not to disrespect Cole, not to disrespect the labels, not to disrespect Drake, not to disrespect all the big all the, all the big people in the, in the game. Motherfucker don't want to hear y'all. Motherfucker want to hear their friends. More than y'all. They want to hear y'all, but these motherfuckers want to hear they people. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I see the game going. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, shout out Skinbone. Uh shout out uh shout out Baby T. <laughs> shout out these like little like little small little independent, you know what I'm saying, entertainment brands that's like entertainment entertaining people while y'all doing all that goofy bullshit. Facts. Shout out um what's my guy name? Shout out Topsy. Shout out um again, shout out Kai Sinat. Um shout out dude. Ah fuck, I can't even remember his name. You know what I'm saying? This 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 shit going to the people. This shit not y'all's. I, I personally remember I'm um, a venue, it's a venue in the city called Sub Sub T Subterranean. I personally remember meeting a dude, like, you know what I'm saying? Um well over 100,000 followers step into the club it's 20 people in the crowd it's, it's 50 people here you know what I'm saying I knew early like yo this shit is not com directly correlated to what the fuck going on all respect to dude I fuck with dude there's no disrespect to him he, if he found if you ever watch this no disrespect to dude you know how, you know I fuck with him you know what I'm saying this shit not correlating with shit and people starting to realize like yo dollar for dollar what the fuck going on and the world gonna keep it a thousand, period. You know what I'm saying? The world forever gonna keep it a thousand. You know what I'm saying? And not even to just end this pod like on a bad, sad ass note. 
because I'm definitely like, you know what I'm saying? I'm this is what this is this is a like two months of like bad shit. It's a lot of bad shit going on. And I was like, you know, in the media. Um, like I told y'all, man, in my city, man, I see the immigration crisis step by step being resolved. I'm talking about real shit. I'm not talking about, you know, just the industry and just rap and just, you know, all this scandal shit. Um, I'm talking about real shit. Um, I see the immigration crisis being resolved, not f completely fixed, but being resolved and solutions being made. Um, apparently not recently, they putting like tracking braces on, like, like it's all type of crazy shit that's going on. Like, yo, this is the city, you know what I'm saying? Um, and <clears throat> we're seeing like, you know, uh, old neighborhoods being rehabbed and brought back to life, slapping new sidewalks into these like neighborhoods and like, you know, these mom and pop restaurants being like getting the glory that they deserve. Um, I think one of the recent headlines of like, it was this restaurant in Pilsen, apparently somebody like graffitied them and then like, it just brought, you know, they, they like put racial slurs all over the place and then like, it just brought up a, a plethora of just like a bunch of like patrons. So shout out to that place. I don't even remember what it's called. I might not put that up there, but you know, the city, like, you know, the city is like, is combating this problem and coming together and unifying and it's something great to see. I can't necessarily speak for everybody else, but it's truly encouraging to see it. Um, and, and April 2024 is very different from January 2024. And that's what's weird about this pod shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes I kind of don't see no difference with some of these other pods. But it may just be the subject matter. I'm not even going to really talk too much about that. Because I'm kind of going to speak in conclusion right now. But we we like as a people as human beings we gotta we, we we gotta know we can't be kangaroos in this shit we can't just let the the, the uh, my word your uh, word get get away from us as men too on gang as men low-key i peeped but you know what i'm saying motherfucker gonna play with you how they play with you because they see what you you know what i'm saying they see what you claim to be good with you know what i'm saying um stack your bread um and just and, and and don't be too don't 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 be too thirsty to to know what really happened that's what i'm gonna leave y'all with um it's a whole lot of motherfuckers making a lot of bread off what really happened what really happened dot com this what really happened you know what i'm saying don't be too thirsty to find out what really happened and and don't make nobody you know don't be don't be dying for that shit if you want to have an excellent life keep excellent company and that's as simple as it's i mean it's it's easier said than done but on god it ain't easier said than done it's just as simple as that if you want to have an excellent life keep excellent company and don't be too thirsty to find out what really happened because everybody know what happened everybody know what really happened and that shit ain't important that shit don't got shit to do with you facts you know what i'm saying and we just gotta we, we gotta i mean it's it's the thirst it's the thirst for that shit that's girl that's not what really happened not yeah bro you know that name and, and you know what you know what on some real shit yeah bro that ain't what really happened let me tell you what really happened how often you hear the guys talking about what the fuck really happened yeah girl that's not what really happened Ooh, do, 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 do. oh he don't know what really happened it's some it's some it's it's, it's some bitch it's, it's some it's some female sh it's some woman it's some woman shit to know to you gotta know what really happened Bro almost kind of don't give a fuck what really happened type shit. Like, on some gossip shit, like, yo, we not in the barbershop talking about what the fuck really happened. We don't care. You know what I'm saying? And I say that metaphorically because I don't be in the barbershop. I cut my own hair. But niggas not in the barbershop talking about what really happened. You know what I'm saying? It's not It's not a man thing to gossip and to, and to kick shit. It's not. So, um, if you want to have an excellent life, keep excellent company. This is the, the XLT podcast. podcast. Um, rest in peace. Rest in peace, OJ Simpson. Yes, and rest in peace, Mister C. Um, well wishes to Volandis and I'm gonna say this for the guys. I'm gonna say this for my black people too. Jesus not gonna fight diabetes for you.
You, you can't you can't play diabetes like that. I'm gonna say that real quick. Um, if you want to have an excellent life, keep excellent company. <laughs> oh yeah. So I just dropped a new single. Um, this shit sounds so cheese ball. I just dropped a new single. Ain't no love when it hurts. Y'all go check that out. Um, I'm gonna show y'all real quick. Um, I told y'all about the mural I'm working on. This is where we're at with it now. Um, we're getting further and further into the texturizing of it, and 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 now we're starting to get further into the color palette of of this mural. Um, I'm unbelievably excited about it. I'm very nervous about it, and this is like my biggest project I've ever done. Like I told y'all, we're doing we're drawing ten thousand faces, and this is separate from that. This is like a completely private contracted thing that we're doing, and it's going to be like yo, it's going to be seen by thousands and thousands of people. Um, this is one of the most, this is the probably the best community facility in this in 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 this area, and I really do believe that um, it's going to inspire a, a bunch of a bunch of people, a bunch of a lot a large amount of the youth, and I'm super excited about it. I'm very anxious about it, and I think that it's going to change for sure. Not only just going to change my life forever, but it's going to inspire so many people, um, especially as I see it come to fruition. So. Um, I just wanted y'all to see that. I'm gonna put it up there really quick. And um, what else was I gonna talk about before we got out of here? Um, I keep telling y'all about this merch, man. And we're gonna get into it. Uh, I'm thinking about opening up a like a, a Shopify. Um, so y'all let me know how y'all feel about this. Um, that's in the works. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about opening up a a product catalog, and it's in the works right now. So um um. I'm gonna do some giveaways and I wanna put I wanna put some of these some of this apparel on some of like the um less fortunate and like homeless or like I just you know kinda just do some giveaways in the street and kind of film it. And um I want you guys to be a part of that too. So I'm really excited about that. Um like I said, man, art has just been really comforting for me during this time of like you know, y'all know how much I love like man, this music stuff and like all the hip hop stuff. Like I'm not talking about like the Mike Delete later and like all this Drake stuff, like we know what that is. But like man, you know, just to kind of see this is like yo. We got to get, you know, let's move on through this chapter. Let's not let this be all year, you know? And, um, and yeah, man, you guys, you guys are really making this beyond special. I want to give another big thanks to YouTube shorts. Thank you guys so much. Y'all are the best. This is putting my art in front of people all over the country. I've never been seen by this many people before in my life. And I want to thank y'all for that. Um, uh, shout out Google, shout out Google, shout out Google macbook pro macbook pro macbook pro um she wasn't sleep she was slurp if you want to have an excellent life keep excellent company this has been the xclnt podcast i love y'all to death stay up man go eat some fruit the summer coming back in man get you a nutribullet go get you some fruit man get your get your health right go run your mile do what you got to do thank you so much for listening this has been the xclnt podcast y'all turn up ah. Thank <laughs> you.